Welcome back to Room 1 on 1, second of the week and probably the most anticipated tie in quite a while. As Celtic head back into the Champions League for the first time in a wee while and we are facing the UEFA Coach of the Year with his UEFA Player of the Year and the European Champions, Real Madrid. So now to help me look forward to this huge event, I am delighted to welcome to the show Eduardo Fernandez. Well, Eduardo, how are you, my friend? Hi, Scott. I'm very well. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, mate. Thank you again. Right. So, Eduardo, it's tradition on the show that the, the, the new guests tell us a wee bit about themselves. Just kind of give us a wee bit of background. And more importantly, why do you support Real Madrid? Well, uh, I don't remember why, to be honest. I've always been uh, like a Real Madrid fan. I, I don't know why. Uh, well, my father is a, a Real Madrid fan, but he's not a big big. Uh, uh, football fanatic or he doesn't watch uh, the, every single match but I don't know why I've always been a Real Madrid fan uh, probably my first memory of uh, being Real Madrid fan is when I was like uh, three years old more or less I don't know and I remember like uh, a top uh, uh, striker for Real Madrid the Mexican striker Hugo Sanchez Hugo Sanchez over yeah. here yeah, a big oh. one. Yeah, yeah. And he, when he scored a goal, he always did like a somersault or yeah, yeah. Like that. And I remember that, and I was repeat that in my coach. So I don't know. Maybe it's for that. Because of that, I am a Real Madrid fan. But that's a that's a very good reason. I like yeah, that. Yeah. I Sanchez. Know. I don't know. And also, when I said always like I am a Real Madrid fan, always all the people say that the, that the easy thing. Uh, like to be a Real Madrid fan, but back then in the nineties, we 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 didn't win the league, we didn't win the champions or whatever. I remember like uh, Barcelona winning um, five years in a row La Liga, so it was not easy thing to be a Real Madrid fan at that time. Now yes, but <laughs> no back then. Like like you say, it's it's funny in the nineties. I remember though. As much as Real Madrid were winning everything, I mean, certainly in the 90s, you had this spell in, in Spanish football where Deportivo were a good team, yeah, where like, um, Sociedad were a good team, Espanol were a decent team, Sevilla, you had all yeah. these different, and, and every one of them had fantastic players, yeah, generally yeah. strikers. Yeah, I think it was more competitive Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah back then, right now. Yeah, and um, and then you go back and he's won the re you won the European Cup. Was it Miavich who scored? Was it Miavich? No, it wasn't Miavich, was it? No. Anyway, my, my knowledge, my my memory, my memory's weird, but it's it, it's quite funny talking because when I do these shows, I'm usually talking to smaller Scottish clubs because yeah. we're the biggest club in Scotland, totally yeah. smaller. And but talking to you guys, I'm kind of awestruck. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh, know. Right. So, so about my, uh, it's funny. I want to say something funny about. Uh, of course. Uh, I got two brothers. Uh, right. I'm the youngest one, and they support Barcelona. So, no. can, can you can you imagine those classicos in my house? It was <laughs> terrible. So. So 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 your dad was uh, Eduardo. Where are you from? I'm from Burgos, it's a small city in the north of Spain, just close to Basque Country, more or less. So. Right, okay, okay. So, I mean, I could understand. Well, because well, Madrid, Madrid very much. Yeah. We're, it's very much the country's team. Yeah, yeah. Barcelona, I suppose, was a regional team until the explosion of football, hasn't it? So, so that's very strange, like your two brothers supporting them. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was like a war when it was a classic or <laughs> or whatever. So my my parents were hey, easy, easy, relax, relax. But yeah, it was, it was fun. It was fun. It still is. It still is. <laughs> amazing, amazing. That's that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Right. Um. So again, it's tradition on the show, especially this early in the season that we we go and have a look back at last season. And we kind of fly through last season and we try and capture your emotion and, and how you were feeling back then and what a season to look back on, right? So um, the bold Don Carlo Ancelotti returned to the club 
on the 1st of June after Zinedine Zidane had left the club that previous summer for the second time. League-wise, it's fair to say it was a good season. After Atletico had won the previous season, Barcelona's problems, Atletico's own collapse, from match day 13, Real Madrid regained top spot in the league and would not relinquish it for the remaining whatever many games. So in the league, 38 league games, 26 wins, 8 draws, 4 defeats, 80 goals scored, only 31 conceded, meant that Madrid finished top with 86 points, 13 ahead of Barcelona in second spot. So league-wise, it must have been a good season. <laughs> no, yeah, to be honest, we were very, very, very solid in, in La Liga last mm -hmm. season. And that's why we came... Uh, we won the league because also uh, Barcelona ha had a lot of problems financial yeah. problems with the with the manager as well. So they were like uh, <laughs> devastated in, in in a lot of fronts. Not oh, only well, yes, right, yeah. playing football and also Atletico. It wasn't solid like previous years. So we 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 were very 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 solid. Atletico were like, very much uh, yeah, a yeah yeah team, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but uh, they they normally are very very solid. Oh. They know how to to play. They 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 have the things very very clear in 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 your heads, in the manager in Simeone how to play, how to get the points. But last season, I don't know. I I think uh, Simeone uh, lost a bit of uh, confidence players somehow. So I don't know. But uh, Atletico is always for next season is always to consider like yeah, a, yeah. one of the favorites for 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 La Liga. I'll, I'll take you back to the start of the season then, Eduardo. So Zinedine Zidane, who'd, who'd only recently come back himself, come yeah. back and he's left you the league title in the the COVID season, and he, and he's gave you the league title, and then he's decided to leave for that second time. And Ancelotti was at Everton. And and let's be honest about it, wasn't doing particularly great at Everton. Yeah. And there was there was what's what's the best way to describe it? There was kind of question marks over the the star of Ancelotti, whether it faded. So how were you feeling when you appointed Ancelotti for that second time? To be honest, I wasn't sure to I wasn't sure that he was the the, the good one mm -hmm. to be the manager of Real Madrid because he was previously in Real Madrid and I, I thought and in that last year uh, we need like a, a change mm -hmm. because Ancelotti was not a change it was like a continuation of Zidane because Zidane exactly. was a continuation of, of, of Carlo Ancelotti so I thought well, I think we need a change because you know after the years the players get relaxed with the same uh, manager or whatever so we need a change just to be competitive again in the champions in la liga but i don't know carlo ancelotti i think he knows how to manage uh, the squad inside not just tactically or in, in, in during the match just inside the uh, with the players the confidence of the players how to play they know he knows how to to to, to talk with them so i don't know i think now in the squad is like a very very good atmosphere between yeah, them yeah. and that's the good thing because they are very good players and if they they have a good atmosphere it's gonna be easier to to do uh to to have a good result yeah of course of course so we are we are we were wrong a lot of <laughs> real madrid supporters last year and i don't know you like being wrong like that though don't yeah, you? yeah 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 okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. To, to to kind of prove how how strong your league title was, and the and the big derby matches we'll call them um, over the season, right? So on match day nine, you had a two one win over Barcelona, and you bettered that a couple of months later with the two 0 win over Atletico. However, both would get revenges in matches. Barcelona in March battered Real Madrid four nothing. And then late in the season in May, when it really didn't, you had a 1-0 defeat to Atletico. And 
their, their second half of the season defeats really didn't set his off, didn't really upset the, the title run. That kind of proves. However, I just wanted to talk about their games, right? So we've got Celtic Rangers. We regard that as one of the biggest. However, as a football fan, I've always wanted to co- come to a Barcelona Real Madrid game. And I would certainly like to come to Madrid derby. These are games that are fuck, they look fantastic. So tell me, last season, just talking about the games and just talk about them in general, please. Yeah, about about the classic because uh, I don't know the first matchup was very very equal, so it was fine the draw. But the last one we lost nil four, so it was a completely disaster. I think it was the worst match we played during the last season. Like with no intensity, nothing, nothing. It's it's more like a is a we we had like a great advantage. I don't know. I remember eleven points or thirteen points uh, uh, from Barcelona. So I think the team was very very relaxed. The players were very mm. relaxed. more really focused, relaxed. more focused in the champions than yeah. In, yeah. In, in that in the clasico. So, but anyway, anyway, it was a disaster, and 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 the fans we were completely devastated and very angry with the players and with the also with the manager because. Losing a classic four nil is 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 a disaster. I don't know. That, well, I was I was thinking there because I never tied them up that maybe you had some European games beside it, but that was the twentieth of March and your last European game was the ninth and your next one was the sixth of April. So there wasn't even that excuse. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but it was it was our excuse or their excuse as well. So. I don't know. It was something that uh, fucking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to express it, but uh, it was it was a disaster, completely sure. a disaster. We were like, uh, "What is going on? We are top of the league. We are in the Champions League. They are completely uh, in a bad, bad, bad way in mm-hmm. every in every single way, like uh, uh, in, uh, in, with the team in in." The president, uh, the manager is new, so I don't know. I was going to say, would would Xavi have been in place by that time? Would he have? Sorry. Would would Xavi have been in back in place? Would Cuban would have been away, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. Xavi was like uh, one month ago. Right, uh, right. Something like that. He was new, but uh, I don't know. I think also for Barcelona, it was the last game of the season. We need to win this. This game, yeah, right, right, because they they didn't want anything last season, so they were focused in this match. We need ah, to right. go for this match, but it's not an excuse for Real Madrid. Yeah, for, for nothing at home. For nothing at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've I've seen I've seen bad results like that, and I know how so. It doesn't yeah. matter which stage of the season they're so. Yeah, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. And especially you've got two brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can you imagine that? <laughs> right. Um, so in the Copa del Rey, around the 32 win over Olcayano in January, 3 1 was followed up by a 2 1 extra time win over Elche later on that month to take them into the quarter finals. However, a 1 0 league, def- a 1 0 defeat to Athletic Club saw them bow at the competition. The ridiculous, in my opinion, Supercopa de España was also played in January in Redash in Saudi Arabia, as Real won 3-2 to put out Barcelona and face Athletic Club again in this in this final, and they beat them 2-0, saw them win the trophy. Now, I mean, I don't really know if you want to talk about that. From, from what I am led to believe, the Copa del Rey is way down, way down on the list of things. I mean, it's not even... It's nice to have, but it's not essential. The Super Copper. Now, tell me your opinion. As as somebody whose team plays in it regularly, what is your opinion of it being played in Saudi Arabia? Uh, I don't agree with with that to play in other country and not to play in Arabia Saudi because it's just about money. They don't care about supporters. They don't care about the the. the the teams they only want money the federation or whoever they take the money and that's it and it's uh, 
and the football is for the fans, for the supporters. Exactly. Yeah. And they need to think about that and just not only the money. Okay, they need money, but they need to look another solution closer to the to the country. First of all, in the country. If you can, <laughs> exactly. If you cannot for whatever reason, then need to be closer. Because if not for the fans to travel there is is, is I don't know, you you lost the essence of the football mm -hmm. with in the stadium with your supporters in a final. I don't know, for the players also needs to be strange to play to play in a stadium with practically no supporters of your team in a yeah. final. I don't know. For me it's, it's no no, I, I agree. I guess it's just it's just something only for money. Exactly. And it's about two, three, four people getting the money, not not I don't know the federation or La Liga. It's just probably. <laughs> right, good. I'm glad I'm glad we're aligned. I'm glad we're aligned. Right. So let's get to it. Right. Europe is where it's at. So Real were drawn with Italian champions Inter Milan, Moldovan champions Sheriff Tiraspol, and Ukrainian second place team Shakhtar Donetsk. And the six ties, only a surprise defeat to Sheriff in match day two saw Madrid drop points, winning all remaining five games, including a 1-0 win over Inter and a 5-0 demolition of Shakhtar. So six games, five wins, one defeat, 14 goals scored, three conceded, goal difference of 11, 15 points on board um, and qualification in top spot. So relatively easy. Despite that yeah. sheriff defeat, I mean, I yeah, watched yeah. that. I watched that game and I was stunned. <laughs> yeah, it was stunning. It was incredible that we lose that game, but the sheriff played very well that mm -hmm. game. But what it is, at least we we get first. In the yeah, group. yeah, yeah. I mean, as as you say, conceding three goals in that group and two of them were to sheriff. I bet yeah. you wouldn't have put in it. Right. So for that top spot. The prize was a, a tie with PSG, who had finished second behind Manchester City in their own group. A 1-0 defeat in Paris. And as I remember the tie, PSG were pretty dominant in that game. Pretty. But the winner only came in the 94th minute, and Mbappé's goal gifting the edge. Now, the return match, the return match should have been a sign that Real Madrid had the star. In return match, another Mbappe goal seemed to end Madrid's interest in the tournament. However, a second half Benzema masterclass saw Real win 3 2 in aggregate and put the world on notice again. Tell me, tell me <laughs> how that felt. Yeah, well, first of all, I think, I don't know if you agree, last season we were not even like a favourite to, to win the championship. No, 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 no. It was Man City. Uh, 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 Liverpool, uh, I don't know, uh, oh, Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea with the champions, Chelsea. PSG, and uh, at that point, even Bayern Munich and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. I would agree with you. So when, when, when we were to, to play against PSG, all people saying, Well, Real Madrid is gonna lose, mm -hmm. that's it, mm -hmm. you are not favorites. And in the first leg, it was they were way better, yeah, they could score like a Three, four, four goals, of course, because they dominate all the all all the game practically. But luckily for Real Madrid, they only scored one at the end of the match. And and the second leg was something <laughs> that <laughs> like it was. I think it was two goals in in one minute or something mm -hmm. like that. So it was something incredible to live. Also, Real Madrid wasn't playing very very well. Wasn't playing better than the first leg, but I don't know. Uh, it happens in the next in the next legs in the next uh, rounds as well. Uh, it's Real Madrid, it's Champions League, it's Bernabeu. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what happened there, but something has to happen there because it's not one, it's not twice, it's three yeah. times this year. So something happens when you play against Real Madrid in Champions League. In Bernabeu. I don't know. As as someone who has a particular distaste for PSG, <laughs> and somebody who doesn't want any English team to win it, 
Uh, it was it was great watching you. It was absolutely yeah. great every <laughs> time, every time. It was almost as if you were sucking them in and then just slapping yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was something incredible. That, this first, it was something incredible, but, but the last one against Man City, we will talk later, but it was... It was <laughs> how to, I don't know how to express it, but... Right, so so before we jump on it, so Chelsea was next. Uh, a 3-1 battering of the hosts in London seemed to suggest, again, the tie was done for the second leg in the Bernabeu, but Chelsea turned up and they took the tie to extra time, 3-1 in normal time. However, a Benzema extra time goal was enough to get you through that tie. And that set you up for another English team, and this time it was Man City. A scintillating 4-3 game in Manchester showed City's promise and weaknesses as they led 2-0, they left 2-1 and they led uh, 3-1 and they led 4-2 at various ties, points of the tie. Now, I watched that game again. I wanted Real Madrid to win, but I just thought, nah, they, they just keep pulling away and they just and you guys just keep catching just keep yeah, just, yeah, just keep hanging catching. on they were also dominating all the match mm-hmm. great a lot of occasions they only scored four but they could score more but when we when real madrid go to the top uh, to the to their area we score more or less it was like i remember like a, a bad pass of mendy or whatever and it was benzema who scored a goal first touch and that's it <laughs> so it was like a, something incredible also very good, good goal from of Vinicius Junior uh, mm-hmm. going through the middle of the of the pitch uh, to the to the to the uh, area of Man City. That was also incredible match to watch for every yeah. support, for for every us, football yeah. supporter. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so um, and the second leg, Riyad Mahrez scores a seventy third minute goal to again seemingly win it for Man City. I remember what I watching on the telly and the Man City fans were making all the noise. They yeah. were making huge noise. But a 90th and then a 91st minute goal, both goals from Rodrigo, set up extra time. And once again, Benzema was a man. His penalty earned in the final place. Now, what was that like? <laughs> wow, what was that? It was something, I don't know. Uh, it was uh, the minute, of, would you say, 70-something that uh, Man City scored. Mm-hmm. Also, in minute uh, 85 or something like that, I think it was Mendy or uh, Militao who saved a goal just in the line of the goalie, something like that. He That's saved right, yeah, yeah. And it was right. the 2-0. And the, the, that was the, that done? The, yeah. It was done. But practically the next uh, uh, thing it was that we scored the first goal. And then... The thing I said to say before, it's it's Bernabe with Real Madrid, it's Champions League. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what happens there. I, I always say that uh, Real Madrid is never dead until the final whistle of the referee in the Champions League mm. in Bernabe. I don't know. It, it, you can see that some of the players, it was like, a, I don't know, not shaking, but it, nervous. They can feel nervous, something in the Man City. And, and that... All, that not happen in, 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 in Real Madrid players. I don't know because they got experience like Modric or Cross. They ask for the ball when they are losing, when they are winning. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter. They know how to do it. And probably that's the difference between yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, they, got, they got the experience. They have win they have won like five or four uh, Champions League now. So mm-hmm. they know how to play those type of matches and you, it, it, you have to really take your heart off today guys because it would really be easy to stop to lose the hunger but they yeah. guys the, yeah. the best in the world just demand the best I, I it's something like they, they still have uh angry to 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 win uh trophies to win leagues to win champions league or whatever modric has like i think 30, 37 years old so Amazing. crazy, it's crazy, and it still is is playing like a top level football right now. Maybe not all the matches because it's normal, but uh, I don't know. Benzema is, I think, he deserves the Ballon d'Or. Over there, I think so. Because when Benzema doesn't play for Real Madrid, we know that um, we cannot score the same goals with him in the in the pitch. 
So I don't know. We got uh, very talented players with a lot of experience. Maybe they are now a bit old, but we are signing very young it's, people just to replace. So we'll we'll come to that in a minute. We'll come to that because that's that's really interesting how how the manager's doing that. So so we we'll So in the final, it was another English tie, Liverpool this time. And a disappointing match from my perspective. Yeah, However, a match. 59th minute, Vinicius' goal was enough to win the trophy for a 14th European Cup in Paris in front of 70 plus thousand fans. It was Real's fourth ever European double, and Carlo Ancelotti became the only Real manager to have won all six available top tier major trophies. Last season was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. Nothing to complain. About. <laughs> very, very, very happy. We we didn't expect that, to be honest, at no, the beginning no. of the season. So it was a great, great surprise for us. And it was unbelievable how to win the Champions League this year with three game backs in a row. And well, the final was not a good, a good final, but the final you need to win you need you don't need to play well yeah. you only need to win um real madrid how they know how to do it for now <laughs> All right, well. okay so we'll, we'll jump on to this season right yeah. so i'm going to go through a whole bust of players here right and then i'll get your opinion on the end right so i a good few outgoings none less so than marcelo who departed the club after 15 seasons, 546 games, 38 goals, and the small matter of six La Liga titles, two Copa del Reyes, five Copa, uh, Super Copa de España, five Champions League, three UEFA Super Cups, and four FIFA Club World Cups. 25 major trophies at the club. Wow. Legend. He's a legend of Real Madrid. He has been the, the best uh, left winger in the world a lot of years yeah uh, what to say uh, he was technically super like uh, top he has scored a lot of goals mm, and not only defense attack where he has scored a lot of goals he with cristiano ronaldo in the same uh, side of the pitch he was incredible couple there unstoppable so nothing more to say to marta Lota. thank yeah. you for oh to be here in Real Madrid, but I think it was time to, to him to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So also Isco and Gareth Bale both also left the club after all three of their, their contracts completed. Uh Marcelo is said to be on the verge of a move to Bayer Leverkusen. I'm not sure if that happened. Whilst Isco joined Sevilla and Bale joined MLS side Los Angeles. Defect defender Victor Chust left for Cadiz who was alone last season. Luka Jovic, the Serbian striker, left for Fiorentina. Mario Gil, another defender, signed for Lazio, while young and Japanese international Takefusa Kubo signed for Real Sociedad after failing to appear for the club. Borja Mayoral signed for Getafe after again spending the last season alone. Miguel Gutierrez left for uh, Girona. Marvin Park and Antonio Blanco left for season loans at Las Palmas and Cadiz, respectively, whilst Casemiro signed on for Man United last, uh, two weeks ago. F uh, Renier, the, the Brazilian midfielder who was on loan at Borussia Dortmund previously, he went out on loan this time to Girona, whilst Hunami Latassa signed on loan with Getafe. And finally, 21-year-old Castilla goalkeeper Tony Fudiaz left, I apologise about that, left for uh, Girona. Um, incomings, Antonio Rudiger, the German international defender, signed on a free after ending his Chelsea contract. Aurelien Tukamemi was picked up from Monaco for around 80 million euros, with add-ons suggesting the deals could be worth 100 million. Uh, the defensive midfielder has played 12 times for world champs France. So squad-wise, well, I mean, so ins and outs, not a lot of ins, but quite a lot of money in yeah. the outs. I don't see anything that you didn't, you couldn't afford to lose. I mean, like yeah. you said about Marcelo. Example, the, the, the worst thing he was Casemiro, maybe. Right, yeah, that, yeah. That we didn't expect that, mm -hmm. but I think it was not a bad sale for Real Madrid at this moment. Right. 
is now I think 31 or 32 years. He 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 wanted to change, and we we got a replacement. Young is very young people, but we got a replacement. So and it was like a 80 million euros or 70 something. So it was a good sale for us. Yeah. Uh, so nothing to complete there. And uh, Isco and Bale, they we they were very good players. But uh, about Bale, we were very, very, very disappointed. <laughs> it, was, it was something, I don't know. For me, it was like, a, it was not a, a football player at, at all at the end in Real Madrid. He was thinking more about golf or, yeah, more, about, national team. or, or more about the national team. And plus the injuries, it, it was like a, the best uh, player uh, uh, with the best salary in the, in the squad. So it was like uh, you need to leave. Yeah, I'm going to be more here. We we are very grateful because he played very well in some finals, scored of course. important mm -hmm. goals in finals, semifinals. But uh, I think he had to leave. Uh, the, I, th the I think so. I mean, I think, and you, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong here. I think time will be will be kind to Gareth Bale. Once, once you guys are a bit older and you look back and and maybe he's retired, you look back and you hear, oh, remember this, remember his overhead kick, remember the, the goal against Barcelona in the cup final, these big moments, big good moments. But, but the fact of the matter, I, I watched the, um, these all or nothing shows on Amazon yeah. and there was a, one for Bayern Munich and Oliver Kahn was sitting there and he was going, well, we can't afford this, we can't afford this, we can't afford that. And because you've got the English League who have just got this unlimited amount of money, you forget that even giant clubs are going, well, this is too much. We just can't afford this. Yeah. And um, and he had to go. You were, you were right. I mean, it's yeah. And also because uh, about Bale, we expected more because when uh, Cristiano Ronaldo left the club, we expected that uh, Bale was going to be the next Cristiano Ronaldo. He was not going to step up. And say, look, I am the leader. Yeah. I'm gonna be the next Cristiano Ronaldo, because he was complaining about that—that that he was not the star, he was not like uh, the opportunities of Cristiano Ronaldo, whatever. So now you got the chance, just take the opportunity. But he didn't take it. And I don't know what happened. And 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 that period as well, I think Benzema took the opportunity. Yeah, but they didn't took it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, this is if you are there, you can took it. Took it. If not, it's because you don't want it. I think. Exactly. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's uh, his personality or what. But I don't know. He's been he's been in Real Madrid for seven, eight years, or I don't know, six years at least, and he doesn't speak nothing. Yeah, that's Spanish. So it's difficult also for the relations in the squad. Of so course. I don't know. Oh, no, that, so, that sounds fair. That sounds fair. Um, right. So he, he seemed happy enough with the the transfer window, just as you say, the Casemiro one. So squad guys, I mean, where they start? <laughs> <laughs> it is quite noticeable. What we spoke about a minute ago, the old heads are kind of slowly and surely leaving. Casemiro, probably, you could probably have kept Casemiro for one, maybe two more seasons. Yeah. However... If you've got a replacement, you've, Gareth Bale's away, uh, Marcelo, Sergio Ramos had left, Ronaldo had left. So, I mean, you, you'll probably be looking in the next season, maybe two, Modric will be kind of make his move. But So squad-wise, right, this, this is hard because usually I'm, I'm looking at squads that will get one, maybe two, three good players, right? So, Portois, amazing last season. The Absolutely best, stunning. The best goalkeeper in the world. Right? I think so. I think so. He he saved the Real Madrid uh, last season in a lot of matches. Without him, probably Real Madrid uh, uh, wouldn't have been the. No, I don't think so. The no. Champions League or the league. So especially that that game we're talking about P, uh, PSG in Paris. Yeah. Especially. Yes. 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 So. Yeah. Right, so um, so Courtois, I just said because he had that point to prove and he has still that hunger. It, his form last season makes the chase that you guys had for De Gea for so long quite shocking because De Gea's went. 
Yeah, yeah, I know, but he was a very like the, one of the top uh, keepers in in the world when yeah. we tried to sign him. That's right. Like we, years ago, like uh, because the fax didn't work at that time. Of <laughs> the fax was that's right. <laughs> right. So um, David Alaba, he proved to be a stunning signing. I I I, I was really surprised he was because I've always rated him. I, I watch a lot of German football. And he's he's been an excellent player, but see the whole thing with his contract, and then you guys got him. I thought maybe you were watching a guy on the way down, but no, it no, was... it was the best thing is we, we we did in the last years. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Since the beginning, he he joined the team very well, and also he can play in the left wing and central back, in the midfielder now that Casemiro has left. So he's very polyvalent. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it's amazing defender and he he's technically very good and also for the for for the team uh, he has. It, it, it's well. kind of the counter of the Gareth Bale thing, isn't it? He's somebody mm -hmm. who's come in and just bought into the team. Yeah, it's just since the beginning he I you can feel that he has very good relation with the with with his teammates. So that's a good thing. For it's a, he has experience in the in, in the Champions League or in, in, in Bundesliga, so it was amazing seeing free. Yeah. So that's that's brilliant. Uh, oh, because, the also, yeah. <laughs> 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 because also we we have lost uh, like a central a top central backs like Sergio Ramos, Barán, mm -hmm. the last years, but we haven't noticed at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, ah, with I mean, Minita, Nacho, we we haven't noticed. So. Yeah, yeah. Right, so the, the, the two old men in the middle of the park, Tony Kroos and Luka Modric. I mean, we all know Luka Modric is, but Tony Kroos, I love Tony Kroos. I think he's a stunning <laughs> player, stunning player. Yeah, yeah. He's always very calm with the ball. He knows how to do it, uh, relax sometimes the, 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 the match. Just you don't need to, to run every time. So he, he practically never... Uh, this is the ball that is the important thing um exactly. we, and with modric in, in his side is is like a that couple is incredible it's like nice. a, iniesta and savi with nice. yeah, 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 yeah. something like that be different of course but i don't know the that couple that those midfielders is, is practically one of the most of the best midfielders eduardo i've said this on your main show a good few times and when I was younger, I didn't get the hype around Clarence Seedorf, right? Uh, yeah. Just didn't get the hype. I was like, he didn't score a lot of goals. He never made lots of killer passes. And somebody said to me, just watch him. Don't watch the game. Watch him. And he never gave the ball away. <laughs> never. Yeah. And I was like, right, I get it. I understand. And that's what we're sitting with Tony Cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never gets the ball. Never gets the ball. He always try to find the correct uh, colleague or the correct player in the correct position to pass the ball. Uh, so that's that's the difference between top players and hundred percent, hundred percent. So grateful to be that they are in Real Madrid. Too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Camavinga, Camavinga's turned out to be a very, very good signing. I think. Vinicius Junior is growing as a player. He's get better and better and better. Uh, Benzema, Benzema's took. He's always been a fantastic player, Benzema. But recently, he's he's took he's took the the club, and and then Rodrigo has been certainly last season. Rodrigo's been an excellent player. So they were the they were the guys that I kind of think. But I'm hardly I'm hardly saying something mad when I say Benzema's been good. So. <laughs> Right, so aside from eight guys, who do you think in the squad is maybe the the guy who doesn't get enough credit? And and tell me, is there any young guys coming into the squad that you think these guys are future stars? Uh, okay, I don't know who's gonna. I think Rodrigo, if he, if we can give him more opportunities, not only just from the bench or something like that, he's gonna get better and better. Because Man. technical is superb, so yeah, I think uh, it's maybe not like Vinicius because Vinicius the his dri dribbling is 
it's, it's impossible to stop. <laughs> no, it's true. It's, oh, I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> the problem, the problem of, 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 of Vinicius that he needs to prove to, to, to score more goals. Mm -hmm. against the goal. So let's see if, if he can improve. I don't know. Uh, I expect a lot about uh, um, Chouameni and also about Ceballos. You know him from Arsenal, Ceballos? Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, he know more about the role he has now in the team because right. you you have Modric and Cross, uh, so you are not gonna play every single uh, no, 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 match. No. But he's very good technically, positionally. Uh, uh, so I think he's gonna be uh, in the future the next Cross or, or right. So let's see, let's see. All right, good. Right, so that's uh, but. I oh. miss. We need. We. I think we. We need uh, another striker, because we got. We got only uh, Benzema. That's not possible to to sign anyone. <laughs> but uh, with only Benzema, uh, we are gonna miss more. If if he gets injured or whatever, uh, we are gonna struggle to score goals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Okay. So that's how we look at this season. Um, so we opened the season with a routine 2 0 win over Eintracht Frankfurt in the UEFA Super Cup. Alaba and Benzema, of course. That game, easy peasy. I mean, Eintracht Frankfurt, I've watched them. Like I say, I watch German football. They've been pretty poor this season, yeah. as is. Not touched on it. So, so that was pretty routine. I don't think we really need to go into that. However, in the league, you've only played three games so far, three wins. What I have noticed is you've conceded in every game. Yeah. See, I've, got, I've got to take these little, little <laughs> That's a good point. We, But we score goals. That's, oh, yeah, I score uh, goals. Yeah, so that's not a problem. But yeah, probably we need to, to improve in, in the So due to the stadium reconstruction, you played the three games and you played them all away from home. So you had an opening day win 2 1 away to Almeria. Then you had a 4 1 away, a one away in uh, Celta Vigo. And then you finally the three one one over Espanol. Now you're yeah, playing at exactly. home your, your first home game since the Man City game, I think, uh, against Real Betis this weekend. That's correct, yeah. eh? It's gonna be so, the first the first match in Bernabeu. Right. So so how's the team look? How how is it, how is it? Some some big names have left in the summer, but the 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 crust of the team is there. You brought in Rudiger. You brought in Chinameni. How's it looking? I think uh, I don't know. Probably uh, in Champions League is is like last year, last season. I think we are not favorites to to win the Champions League. Okay, we are the current champion mm -hmm. of Champions League. But I think, for example, Man City, uh, Liverpool, or PSG, uh, they have better squad in in, in position. Better top like a Haaland or Salah. They got. Uh, Better players uh, in in their squad, so I think they are more favorites than Real Madrid. It's, it's easy to say that after winning last year, but uh, I don't know. Uh, we haven't we haven't signed in, uh, signed it, uh, any top top player like Man City or Liverpool or Chelsea or PSG. So let's see. Let's see. In La Liga, in La Liga, uh, I think uh, it's gonna be between Real Madrid and Barcelona because mm -hmm. Barcelona has signed a lot of players, uh, very good players, to be honest. I don't know. How where, have they signed them? I don't know. <laughs> where, I don't know where they found the money, but <laughs> they must have a big couch. They found yeah. the couch there. <laughs> but uh, it's what it is. They, they design uh, Lewandowski, uh, Rafinha. So very 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 good players. So they are gonna be there. Also. So, so that, let's let's go back on something you talked about there, and I meant to kind of bring it up. Um, you said you could do with another striker. Now, in the summer, we were led to believe that you guys basically had Mbappe. Mbappe yeah. was sold, and that then maybe took the eye off of Haaland. Yeah. And then Mbappe obviously de decided to become sporting director of Qatar, and now he's now he stays in Paris. 
what what do you think? I mean, you're, you're saying you need a striker. You're really relying on Benzema staying fit and playing every big game. Yes, because we don't have any other one. So you look at Jovic, he's already away as well. No, look at Jovic, he's in. We got Mariano, but it's not, uh, I think, uh, good enough for Real Madrid. But uh, talking about Mbappe, it was embarrassing. That situation, it was embarrassing because mm -hmm. the club, the Florentino Perez or the manager, or all the supporters, we thought that the Mbappe was coming. And supposedly, uh, he said yes to Real Madrid. And the last two days, he said, no, I'm, I'm going to stay in Paris. So it was something embarrassing. And um, from my point of view, uh, I think uh, that player uh, would have never played in Real Madrid. Because um, it was embarrassing for the club. And yeah. it's Real Madrid, is not uh, other team. It's Real yeah. Madrid with, with, with the history. You cannot do that to, to, it, to Real Madrid. It then begs the question. It then begs the question, as you rightly say, so Mbappe has burnt his bridges, potentially. I mean, we never know in football. Yeah. Um, in Haaland, Haaland will be at Man City for at least two seasons, maybe yeah. three. And I think then he'll move to Spain. I just think that's the way. That's I, From watching his career, and because I like Borussia Dortmund, and the way he kind of treated the Borussia Dortmund thing, yeah, he, he wants to, to move to other leagues or to yeah, other yeah. So as yeah. I, I expect you, however, that leads the question, if you had a choice right now and you can't get Haaland and you can't get Mbappe, who's the guy that we are Madrid get? Because yeah. Lewandowski would have been good. <laughs> yeah, two months ago I would say Mbappe, okay, because uh, he has played more uh, Champions League matches and he, he has more experience. And he has demonstrated that uh, he was uh, better than anyone in the yeah, yeah. In, in the Champions League. So I would say Mbappe. Uh, Mbappe. But right now, uh, watching Haaland in the Premier League, I don't know. It's something incredible. So oh. he's he's gonna be, I don't know, the next Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. He's gonna be there for a decade at the top of mm -hmm. without the, a doubt. Unless unless injuries touch with yeah, the yeah. injury but yeah. But but I'm asking you, I, I'm kinda I'm I'm flinging something out to you could to see if you're gonna bite on it. Right. Real Madrid there's a certain standard of player that Real Madrid want. And especially with, with your your owner chairman uh, president, whatever he's called, the way he as much as he doesn't do the Galactico thing he yeah. still likes Galacticos, right? Yeah. There's no yeah. doubt of it. So, should a certain Brazilian in Paris become available, would you entertain it? Neymar, no. Yeah. So, I have <laughs> no, to be honest. He, it happens the same with Mbappé, with Neymar, with Barcelona and Real Madrid. The, he decided at the end Barcelona and he was said yes to Real Madrid time ago. But I think he was the the after he leaves uh, he left uh, Barcelona. I thought, okay, he's gonna be like Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because technically, and uh, it was it was amazing. So, but I don't know what happened with him. But he's not able to get that level during uh, one season or two seasons in a row. I don't know yeah. what happened there. What happened with Neymar? The party, I don't know. The the move the move to PSG, like you said, instead of carrying this club and being the face, and I mean, I don't know if you recall, do you remember when Barcelona played PSG in the second leg and Neymar was outstanding? Yeah. And then yeah. he moved and you were like, like you said, he's shooting for the stars. Yes. And he's it's the other way. <laughs> ah, it's it's just I always wondered. Is he somebody who could reignite his career? Which is mad to say, at like get a move to and and show the world what he can do because there is no doubt. Apart from being a wee idiot, he's a fantastic football player. Yeah, on his day. yeah, 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 yeah. He's a fantastic player, but I don't think he's a like a team player, something mm. like that. And we don't need right now that. Yeah. Yeah. And. I don't know what happened in PSG. 
they have signed in like a, the best, not the best players, but very good players uh -huh. in the last years, but they are not able to win the Champions League. And I don't know why. I don't know what happened there. I'm all good for that. I don't know what happened there. PSG <laughs> in the bin. <laughs> right, I'm going to, I'm now looking for a wee bit of, um, Hopefully we get a wee bit of praise here for my for my own beloved club here, right? So so the draw came out, and I'm led to believe that you've got a couple of associates, a couple of friends who are Celtic fans. Yes, right. So so Stu told me this, and so so you've obviously heard the Celtic ever since Celtic first made it into the Champions League in 2001. We've always wanted Real Madrid, right? So so I mean we've always you know yourself, you're a football fan, there's clubs on pedestals and you guys and we've always wanted to be on Madrid and it's never ever happened, never happened so eventually <laughs> we've, got, we've got you guys this year, right, so, but I want to look at it, so we were drawn with yourselves, you were drawn with Shakhtar Donetsk again and we have got RB Leipzig now can you tell me? I know you're in London just now, and you've you've been floating about. However, what's the the what was the thinking in Spain, in general? What was the thinking from a Real Madrid fan perspective? Was it basically yes, we've got a really easy group? Was that this is a cool group? Was that this is a shit group? <laughs> no. To be to be honest, uh, is the comment in general in the newspapers or whatever that is an easy group for Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah. that's the comment in general. I think more or less is easy group to pass first or second. I don't know. Leipzig maybe is the um, other team that can be there, but is Real Madrid? It should be first at the end of, yeah. the, the, of this stage. Uh, after that, I don't know. Uh, I remember to watch a Celtic uh, game against Barcelona in Champions League. Uh, I don't remember, like 30 years ago, uh, you beat you beat them. Uh, um, yeah. And I'm also, good. and also, I watched last year against Betis in the um, in the Europa League, That's also right, yeah. in Celtic Park. And it was always the same how you play there. Is the atmosphere how to the fans like? Uh, uh, support the team mm -hmm. all the time and also how they play is always press 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 they fight every ball they run a lot and the counterattacks are terrible as well it's just the press that the, i think the the players from real madrid barcelona or betis feel there and i think i don't know for real madrid uh, next week uh uh, if they can control those feelings about to get pressed by the supporters or how to how how the the Celtic players play during the first 15 minutes 20 minutes they can hold their ball a bit yeah they are gonna uh, have more possibilities or, or well, well the obvious concern from my side is that this is Real Madrid this isn't yeah see Shakhtar Donetsk who maybe won their league easily and the, with a good style. Guys like Modric aren't going to get harassed no. by this, the crowd. They're not going to get harassed. They've been there, they've done it. I mean, it, there's, the old, there's an old adage when Celtic play smaller teams, we have to have a bad day and you have to have a good day. Yeah. And I think the roles yeah. have totally reversed. But that, that happens against the big clubs. I'm not gonna call a Celtic a small club because it's a big club, but in terms of in relative terms, in, in terms of Champions League, okay. Yeah. So, but sometimes uh, the the big uh, or Real Madrid or Barcelona or PSG get relaxed when, when we play against uh, uh, worse teams or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are gonna have your opportunity there. Uh -huh. That depends of the players, most of the times in this type yeah. of matches. Is the first. A match for the Champions League, so I think you are going to have more chances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see, let's see. I'm, I'm looking forward to, 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 to watch this match. As you say, I got uh, two, three, three, three colleagues, three mates, so Fantastic. Celtic supporters, and <laughs> I'm going to enjoy to watch 
to Manchester. Well, you've got Barcelona brothers, now you've got Celtic friend. None, none of these <laughs> you, you're fine. <laughs> um, right, so, so I know it's a bit early and we've got the, the Betis game this weekend, but how do you think you guys will set up? Do you think it'll just be the usual? I mean, I, I expect you guys will give us the respect we are due. However, I fully expect you guys to bring the game on to us. And it, I think this season, uh, Ancelotti is going to rotate a lot right. in the in the midfield, at least. For for example, Benzema is going to play. Mm -hmm. Vinicius, for sure, is going to play. But in, 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 in the midfield and in the defense, I think he's gonna rotate. He's gonna rotate because he has a lot of players to do it. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna play Militao or Rudiger or Alaba, but they can rotate or Mendy on the left wing. I don't know. Probably he's gonna play Chamini in in, in mm -hmm. the, but then can play Ceballos or Modric. I don't know. It's difficult to say at this point. At this. Yeah, stage. yeah. It's about early. Yeah. But I think. Ancelotti is going to rotate, even if, if it's Champions League, or even if it's the first match of the Champions League. I think he's going to rotate in some position. But, but Benzema, Courtois and Vinicius, they are going to be there. Sorry. <laughs> right, OK. I'm going to ask you, give me a prediction. A prediction? Oh. <laughs> don't, don't, you can offend me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I think it's gonna be one three. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. All right. It's, it's, there's a bit of me, right? So there's Celtic pride. We are Celtic. We are a big club. Yeah. Historically, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. But we've we've played PSG and Neymar, and we've been destroyed, destroyed, yeah. and it's very. It can it can take the wind out you as you can imagine, and. We're playing up against the European champions. However much we wanted them, we're up against the European champions. And if things don't go right, I mean, we played Bayer Leverkusen last season and we were okay. We missed a couple of good chances. We were okay and we were beat 4 nothing. This is having Bayer Leverkusen. Now, I guess we have a drink. I don't know. I will be happy if, we, if Real Madrid lost this game and we pass first. Right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll but, that. Yeah, but I I think if you have any chance against Real Madrid, it's in Celtic. Uh, yeah. Park. So, right. so because of the ambient atmosphere, so there is super. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you this question, right? And you might not have the answer, right? So in the last game of this group, Celtic travel to Madrid, right? Yeah. I will, I'm booked up. I'm looking forward to. It. Hopefully, I get a ticket now. Real Madrid, due to constructions, have only supplied us with 1,800 tickets instead of the 3,000 we should really have got. However, that's what it is. Now, my question to you, Eduardo, as my representative of Real Madrid, um, should Real Madrid have topped the group, already qualified, and we come to that last game would the Real Madrid fans decide ah, and just leave it? I would say so, but I'm not all the Real Madrid. No, 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 but, but, from my opinion, from I would say okay, if we are top of the of the of the group and that's it, I don't mind to to lose the game. And if Celtic pass second, that would be the best thing to can pass in can, can happening in, in this in in this group. To be honest, because uh, I'm not a supporter of Celtic, but uh, I don't know. With my mates, uh, supporting Celtic is like uh, my club in Scotland or in UK. So that's, that's good enough. That's good. I I, I accept. I accept. <laughs> and I also I will try to go to Bernabeu to watch the match. <laughs> I will try to get tickets there, and maybe we can meet there for a beer before the match. Or just one. This one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eduardo, that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for, mate. Um, just before we go, are you on social media? If anybody wants to follow you, anything like that? Uh, I'm Instagram, but uh, yeah, 
do you have Instagram or Twitter? Uh, just, just, just tell, tell us what your Instagram address is. Okay, let me check. <laughs> I don't remember quite well. Um, should I should I prime you about that? <laughs> Okay, is E D U low bar F D Z low bar I Z Q. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> easy, 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 easy. easy. <laughs> okay, anyway. Eduardo. Thank okay. you very much for taking your time out on this Friday night. You've helped me out once again. Uh, it's been excellent talking to you. Um, I hope we get anything i would like to think we give you a game at least at the very least yeah, we yeah. give you a game um yeah. but once again thank you very much good luck with the season good luck with yourself and we'll maybe catch up before the last game yeah no problem same for celtic and thank you very much it was a great great pleasure to be there with you you're some man thanks pal yeah, take care